Okay, so I went back and I sort of emptied out my inventory. I checked how much damage different things are going to be doing. Um, I picked up the spare electric light that I'd made, and I went and I raided a house down the road because I had a little bit of time for it. Didn't get anything useful from the house, really. Um, I've got a couple of hammers, and I've had a check, and my hammers actually do the most damage out of all my weapons. Uh, the hammers are actually the highest damage item I've got at the moment. That's because they're just such much, such a higher level compared with my iron club or my hunting rifle, sorry, or my hunting knife or my bow. Uh, and it's just because they're construction tools, so they ended up being a higher level. Uh, they do more damage. I've got my pistol. I've got 200 arrows. Um, I've got some spare steel arrows. Got some food, some water. Got my repair materials up at the top. So I have pretty much everything I need. I'm going to make some wooden frames and I'm going to lay down the electric light. I much prefer electric light. One thing I would say is that for multiplayer servers, one thing you can do is what's called a baited pit and pillar trap. So what you'd need is you'd need a 5x5 five five pit. Uh, you'd have two layers of spikes around the edge of the 5x5 five five pit. And in the center of the 5x5 five five pit, you'd have a pillar. Uh, you can make it the same pillar as the adobe pillars, uh, but the 100 variety rather than the 50 variety. Uh, and then, don't know why it gave me the drinking animation then. Um, and then in the center of your pit where you have this pillar, you grow that pillar all the way up to a little bit above ground level. And you basically have someone stand on it during the night and that guarantees every zombie is going to run straight into the pit. Because just like with a man trap, they're going to go for the person who's standing and they won't be able to reach them. So they're going to go to the closest point they can, which is going to be the edge of the pit. They're then going to lunge because they're going to try and attack and they're going to fall straight down the pit. So if you're on a multiplayer server, a baited, man and, uh, man, uh, a baited pit and pillar trap is a slightly better way to do it because you're going to guarantee all the zombies go down and you're not going to get damaged the um, space above. You're not going to get damaged the areas above. I was just having a little bit of a look to see if I could find anything worth buying with my skill points. Um, possibly worth buying... Um, uh, my highest damage weapon's probably my highest damage weapon is probably my um, club, so I'll probably go for a pummel peat. Um, but even with the pummel peat, my hammer's probably going to be a high, more higher damage weapon because of the the percentage. There's no point taking breaking and entering because if I was going to break my way through something and do block damage, I wouldn't use a club anyway. Uh, that might apply to sledgehammers though. Uh, break and entry might be worth it for sledgehammers if sledgehammers count as weapons rather than tools. So I'm just spending my spare time just sort of making a little bit of extra space while I wait. Um, as I said, on a multiplayer server, a baited trap is a better one. Uh, but on a single player server, it doesn't really matter. You can go with an unbaited trap perfectly fine. You're not going to have any issues. And there you can see like the difference in damage. Uh, my hammer is going to be a much better choice for killing anything that managed to, manages to survive the drop. Now, I don't think much is going to manage to survive the drop, to be fair. I think most stuff is going to die pretty much instantaneously. Um, and this is the first horde, so it's going to be a reasonably light horde. Now, the other thing you have to think about is that when you are this far underground, the horde spawns are actually going to be slightly different. Um, the way horde spawning works is it works on placing zombies um, around you and uh, just showing that uh, I could repair it using one uh, sand and one... Clay. I just wanted to check to make sure it was one sand and one clay. Uh, but when you are getting spawns during a uh, horde night, it does depend on the space around you, on what it can find to spawn things on. While you are this far underground, you are going to get less zombies spawning. So that is another advantage of the pit and pillar trap. Now, as horde nights get further on, and you're going to have more hordes, more zombies, more spawning, a bigger spawning area. It's going to have less effect uh, along that line, but that is an advantage of the pit and pillar. So you can see I can repair all of this. I can even um, sort of reinforce things on the other side. Uh, the attack distance is slightly short, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to repair these because these might take a little bit of a knock during the night. I'm going to upgrade these. Um, I doubt they're going to take a major knock, to be fair. I doubt they're even going to take a knock. Um, but might as well upgrade them because I have the spare scrap iron. As you can see, I've got a huge amount of scrap iron. I don't really need that much. I'm going to need maybe 30 scrap iron to repair the spikes during the first horde. So, um, digging out and basically just waiting for the horde to begin. 
Uh, I'm not sure whether I should cut or whether I should just leave it and let the horde start. Um, I'll probably just leave it and just let the horde run because there's not going to be too much. And I'm going to show you the sort of aftermath and the pit and pillar trap after the horde night. Um, I meant to reinforce the block behind because I don't want my ladder getting destroyed. And just basically make sure you've got plenty of light to see with. You've got space between the pillars and you've got everything set up for your pit and pillar trap. This one's a little bit more shallow than I'd like. I'd like a little bit of a deeper pit and pillar trap, but it's, it's fine. It's not an issue. And here we go. So we've had our sort of horde night begin. You can see even when I'm crouched, I'm hunted. There's no real point being crouched during a horde night because it doesn't matter where you are or how far you are. You can be at world height. You can be at bedrock. They will know where you are. And there we go. We had our first fall and our first instant death. And I can cut it up, get a little bit of um, bits and pieces. Primarily you want to be getting rid of the bodies as quickly as possible because the bodies do reduce, as far as I'm aware, the bodies reduce fall damage and also as far as I'm aware, oh, we had another fall there. As far as I'm aware, not only do they reduce fall damage but they cover up the spikes and because they cover up the spikes, uh, they're spikes won't be doing damage to stuff that falls on top of them. Worth having an axe because the axe is cut through bodies quicker as you can see. So although the hammer does more damage the axe is going to destroy bodies faster. Which is just a peculiarity of it. Now I can hear them attacking something upstairs so I'm going to be running around my pit to encourage them to fall down. She survived the fall and she was stunned by it so she makes a nice easy kill because she was stunned when she fell so she was taking a bonus damage. If I'd switched over to my hammer, I probably could have one-shot her. She took three shots with the um, axe, which isn't bad because um, she's one of the nastier zombies that you can get spawning on the first few days. I mean, you can get cop zombies, you can get screamers, you can get all sorts of stuff spawning on the first few days. They've toned down screamer spawns during the hordes, and rightfully so, because screamer spawns during the hordes are nightmares. But um, for the most part, like you don't really have to worry too much about Screamer Horns during Nightmares. Um, and Cop Zombies during the first Horde are very low. And you can see that things just drop in and die. And there's another one. And we're just having Zombies drop down on the pit. He survived, um, but again, like didn't survive very well. Crawler Zombie didn't survive. Um, Every now and then they're actually landing on the blocks around the pit because they're coming down so close to the pillars. But you can see how like so many so many things have fallen now that it's actually covering up spikes and preventing those spikes from working. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to clean up the zombies. And when you have an effective pit and pillar trap in place, this is basically how easy a horde can get. A horde can get to the point, even a day 30 horde, can be at the point where you are literally just waiting for the next zombie to fall. Um, the top of my pit probably not going to do so well because I can hear them attacking. Ooh, took a little knock. He didn't take as much damage as he perhaps should have in the fall because he landed on I think three different bodies. So he had a nice highly resistant fall. Don't know why I'm using my axe there. There we go. Use the hammer. The hammer does a hell of a lot more damage than the axe does. Um, and you can see that like this thing is just chomping through zombies. Uh, even day 30, if you've got a bedrock level pit, so you've got a 50 deep pit, you're probably not going to even have to fight a single zombie, except maybe the occasional cop zombie, or if you get a massive spawn, they fall in the pit and they fill your pit up. Um, those are really the only times when you're going to have to really worry. And even when you've got zombies that explode before you can sort of get their material off them, the stuff they drop falls into the pit and you can pick it up out of the pit. So not hard to do, a little bit of clay, a little bit of sand around just to reinforce and repair the um, pillars that have been damaged. And you see like at most like pillars have taken 2-3% damage. Um, it, it, it's nothing to be worried about. Now again I can hear them attacking upstairs so I'm a little bit concerned that my uh, slope, my access into the pit hasn't worked properly. Just going to dump everything off. You can see I've already filled my inventory, so I'm going to empty out everything that I don't need. So anything that isn't a repair or reinforcement material um, is just going to go straight into a chest. And I'm going to see if I can't get rid of these bodies as soon as possible, because I don't want them clogging up my pit. 
There we go. And I'll just shimmy around this and I'll go and get the other guy. But yeah, this is this is a, a day seven horn and pit and pillar. It is nothing. If you can get a pit and pillar trap set up for day seven, this game becomes almost comically easy. Uh, this is why people have done things like the True Survival mod. The True Survival mod is a nightmare of a mod. It makes the game, even with zero zombie spawns, you are going to get zombies. And even with zombie spawns set to zero, you are going to get a lot of zombies. And you're going to get zombies with mixed abilities. So if you want a real challenge, then True Survival, with um, even with settings as low as possible, is going to be a challenge for you. So if you think that Seven Days to Die is too easy, grab True Survival. I am not affiliated with True Survival. I've just played it and think it's a nightmare. Um, and I want to torture you all by introducing you all to it. Uh, but this is the easiest sort of Day 7 horde, really. I mean, I've, I've had easier Day 7 hordes. I had a Day 7 horde where I, on Day 2, found a mini bike schematic. And on Day 4 literally picked up the parts I needed for the mini bike from a couple of zombies I killed, um, engineering zombies I killed. So I literally had everything I needed for the mini bike by day five, and on day seven I just rode my mini bike around. But <laughs> this is perhaps the more resource gathery way of doing it. And you can see even on day seven with a few, only a few zombies, um, I am getting plenty of resources from my zombie kills. And that little bit of clay and little bit of sand to repair the pillars every now and then, it's just, it makes sense to me to leave them as adobe until you've got a lot of uh, concrete generation. You don't need to go with concrete pillars. I would say you don't need to go with concrete pillars till, 40, till Horde 5, 4 maybe, maybe even Horde 6. Um, because you're just not going to get it. You can hear someone's attacking a something up there so my slopes not obviously not been ideal but that's fine um, because they still need to dig down to me I've still got my uh, sort of gaps around the left and right hand side so if they do dig down and crawl into that gap they're gonna take a huge amount of fall damage on the way down there, there there's literally just a case of waiting out the horde now the first horde usually consists of a single horde wave followed by a trickle of, of minor zombie spawns. Uh, later on you will get repeated horde waves and the horde waves will be much bigger. I've survived through the first horde wave uh, on day one and now I'm just dealing with any trickle zombies that come in afterwards. So that guy attacking up there is probably just one zombie, might be two, so I doubt he's going to be able to dig through as enough cobblestone before the day is out, before the night is out to actually make any difference. The reason I'm running around the pit is to try to encourage him to stop attacking things and to come after me. So I'm trying to get him to basically pick a direction and, and wander in that direction and come into the pit after me. No guarantee he will, but I'm hoping to try and get him down into the pit by basically moving around the pit and trying to get him to move a little bit, to get him to shift side to side and up and down and things like that. Fingers crossed. But for the most part, it should be a nice, easy night from now on, if we get any more spawns at all. And if we do get any more spawns, they're probably just going to fall into the pit and insta-die. But as I said, like in a multiplayer server, if you want to do a baited pit and pillar trap, which pretty much guarantees everything's going into the pit and pillar trap, um, except for spitting cop zombies, which is the one problem with the baited pit and pillar trap, is spitting cop zombies will... Um, not necessarily fall into the trap. They will stand and spit at the person standing on the pillar, uh, which is the, the disadvantage of a baited pit and trial trap, pillar trap. But any pit and pillar trap uh, where you're not getting cop zombie spawn or where you don't have a cop zombie spawn, um, having the um, bait pillar in the center and having someone stand on the bait pillar is going to guarantee everything falls down into the pit. So a 5x5 five five with a pillar in the center. Um, or including walls a 7x7 seven seven with a pillar in the center. There we go, we had someone come down again. And they insta-died, so... Again, this is perhaps a little bit of a boring horde. I know that Rock Jester Gaming on his 7-day horde had his man trap, which was very exciting because it collapsed twice. So if you want to see a man trap collapse, uh, feel free to head over to RC Jester and have a look at his Day 7 video, because he built a beautiful man trap, 
uh, based upon a design I'd shown him, and it collapsed. <laughs> I say he built a beautiful man trap. He tried to build a beautiful man trap, and his man trap collapsed. And I had a good little chuckle at him. Um, this is one of the difference between experienced and inexperienced players, in my personal opinion. Not to say that RC Jester is a bad gamer or an inexperienced gamer. Um, he's just not so experienced in this particular game, in my opinion. And I think it's one of the differences in experienced and inexperienced people in this game. In this game, an experienced person will set up their defense for day seven as soon as possible. Most people I know have a man trap, which is the standard uh, spiked floor with raised platform trap used for day seven hordes, set up by day three or four. Um, but inexperienced players will do a little bit more scavenging. I want to get more stuff. I want to. I want to get more things. And then they're suddenly rushing around on day seven to try and desperately build a man trap as soon as possible. Um, and for me, at least, I, I, I like to have my traps built quicker. This was only finished on day seven because it's a pit and pillar trap, and getting a pit and pillar trap set up in seven days is very fast. If I'd spawned in the desert, probably could have had it done quicker, and probably could have had it a bit deeper. But that's not a major problem really. It's it's deep enough and significant enough. And there's a little thing around here that keeps showing me is not quite repaired all the way and I can't quite find it and I'm going to spend a little bit of time looking for it uh, over the next couple of minutes but in reality it's 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 just me running around the, the pit and pillar trap and waiting for stuff to spawn now. But in the morning I will show you the top of the pit and pillar trap. Uh, this has this, this is basically it. Um, there might be another couple of zombies fall in, but I'm not going to take any damage from them. They'll likely insta die. So what I'll do is I'll skip forward to the day and I will show you the lid of the pit and pill trap and the damage that was done to it. Okay, so we are back up above. It's daytime now and we're going to have a look at the pit and pillar trap. We've got a crawler. He was probably the one who did the most damage. This is the problem with these raised things and why you should really have a slope going into your pit is that um, the crawlers get caught on slopes sometimes, why you should have a slope going down rather than going up. Uh, you can see that uh, between the crawler and a couple of other zombies they've managed to dig down and they've damaged some of the cobblestone and taken out a little bit of the wood. But they're still falling down into the pit and they've actually started building a slope for me downwards. So. Not too bad, not too much damage. I didn't get anything useful from the horde. I didn't get any weapons or any ammunition or anything, unfortunately. Um, I think I got one drop of a decent uh, football helmet, and that's it. But this has been the quick start and quick pit and pillar trap. Fastest movement to a pit and pillar trap possible. I personally think this is probably not actually the fastest pit and pillar trap possible. If I dug a 3x3 three three instead of a 5x6, um, and not walled my pillar trap so I'd add stone walls instead of wooden walls so just natural stone walls and then if I had dug out at the bottom to make my space at the bottom and installed the pillars I probably could have done this quicker if I'd started in the desert I certainly could have done this quicker it would have been a little bit more difficult to dig outwards at the bottom but I could have done this quicker in the desert uh, but for the most part this has been an extremely fast pit and pillar trap, up and ready for day seven with time to spare. A uh, little bit tight on food, a little bit tight on water, but I now have a pit and pillar trap that I can repair inside a day, and it will actually survive through day 14. This pit and pillar trap would be perfectly fine for day 14. Uh, day 21, day 28, day 35, I'd want to dig it deeper, but that's not a major issue. I could dig it deeper inside a couple of days because I'm already at 30 block depth. I dug 30 block depth and built the entire thing in um, six days. I could dig another 10 blocks deep using my upgraded tools in probably a day, day and a half, because I can work throughout the night now, which I couldn't do at the start of this. I could only work throughout the night really on day six and day five, but I can now work throughout the night, so I could probably dig another 10 blocks depth in a day, a day and a half, which means that I can expand this pillar downwards and uh, this pit downwards I can give it a sloped entrance probably in a couple of days and I have plenty of time now to go and scavenge so this has been the quick start the fast pit and pillar trap and day seven horde thank you all for watching I will see you all in the next video bye